Hi, I'm Cody Smith, Tech Support Manager for Cloys. In this video, I'll be demonstrating timing system installation in Ford 3.5 and 3.7 liter dual overhead cam V6 engines. Ford made multiple variations of this timing system throughout production. Some engines used roller style primary chains, some inverted tooth primary chains, some engines have two VVT phasers, others use four VVT phasers, some had internal water pumps, and others use external water pumps. On top of that, you have naturally aspirated and turbo engines installed in both front wheel drive and rear wheel drive platforms. But no matter which engine variation you have, the timing installation procedure is very similar. And this video will show you how to confidently install the appropriate Cloys timing kit for your application. Cloys offers a full line of timing components and kits for all the different 3.5 and 3.7 liter engine variations that I just spoke about. Here's a look at the timing component kit 9-0738S that we will be installing in this video. The kit comes with chains, tensioners, guides, and the crankshaft sprocket for various 2011 to 2017 Ford and Lincoln applications with an inverted tooth primary chain and quad VVTs. This is the 9-4226S kit for earlier model roller primary chain engines with two VVT phasers. And here is the 9-0738SA kit for rear wheel drive platform, turbo equipped, inverted tooth chain engines with four VVT phasers. And last but not least, the 9-0738SB kit for inverted tooth applications with two VVT phasers. Because of the variations mentioned and the similarity of the different components, it is absolutely crucial to visit our part finder on cloys.com to ensure you are purchasing the correct kit for your engine. All right, let's get started. First, to access the timing components, remove the accessory drive components, the balancer, the valve covers, and the engine front cover. With the covers off, but before removing any components, rotate the engine until the three primary timing marks are aligned as shown. 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock on the cam phasers and 4 o'clock on the crankshaft sprocket. This is the position the engine needs to be in to service the timing components. Don't worry about which piston is at top dead center or what stroke you're on. Just rotate until the three sprocket marks are at these locations and stop. If you are servicing the timing system due to a system failure, take care in rotating the individual shafts due to possible piston to valve contact. This is an interference engine. Also, most publications and procedures reference camshaft holding tools that they may claim are required to do this job. These holding tools are not required and we will not be using them during this demonstration. We can now start the disassembly. First, remove the VVT solenoids to get them out of the way of the secondary components. If you have a single phaser on each head, remove the solenoid bracket assembly to access the camshaft phaser bolts. Now remove the primary time and chain tensioner and the tensioner arm. Next, on the left bank, remove the lower primary chain guide, then the primary chain and the crankshaft sprocket. Now we are ready to remove the camshaft phasers and the secondary chains. Use the hex features on the camshafts to hold the shafts while breaking the bolts loose. Our phaser bolts require a T55 internal torque socket and we are using an inch and a sixteenth wrench on the cam hex features. Please note that these phaser bolts are torqued to yield and Ford recommends replacement after each installation. Once both phaser bolts are removed, the two camshaft phasers and secondary chain on each bank will come off together as an assembly. Repeat this process on the other bank. Next, remove the lower contact pads from the secondary tensioners and push the tensioners up out of the cylinder head features. If you have the single phaser heads, just unbolt the secondary tensioners and remove. You can now remove the upper primary guides. Now is the time to remove and replace the water pump if your engine is equipped with the internal pump. If you have an external water pump, inspect the idler sprocket assembly and replace if necessary. Let's now start the reassembly. First, install the upper primary time and chain guides on both banks. Torque the bolts to 89 inch pounds. Now we are ready to install the secondary time and chain tensioners. Before we install them, let me show you how they work. The tensioners come in the deactivated state with the installation clips keeping them from becoming fully compressed. 
Once installed, the clips are removed and when ready, the tensioners must be compressed to activate. Once the tensioners are activated, there is no way to deactivate them. They can be reused, but they need to be held compressed from behind through the access hole during secondary system assembly. Tensioners on single phaser heads have a simple pull pin to activate design. To install the secondary tensioners, apply some oil to the tensioner housings, the O-rings, and the cylinder head bore features. With the installation clips in place, insert the tensioners into the bores with the curved side of the contact pads to the back and push them in until they are fully seated. Then install the lower chain contact pads by sliding them in from the front. Once fully installed, pull the installation clips, but be careful not to compress the tensioners. The secondary chains need to be installed before activation. On single phaser heads, install the tensioner bolts to 89 inch pounds. We can now install the cam phasers and the secondary chains. Just like disassembly, the two phasers must be installed together with the chain. Lay out the phasers and the secondary chains on a table as they would be installed on the engine. Note that R is for right bank and L is for left bank. Align the two marked links of the secondary chains to the appropriate timing marks on the phasers. If your engine only has one phaser per head, align the marks of the phasers and secondary sprockets. Note the secondary sprocket will have the timing mark on the other side, but the dowel slot can be used for reference. Once assembled, take note of the dowel hole positions of the phasers and the dowel locations on the camshafts. As an assembly, slide the phasers onto the camshafts and index the phasers onto the dowels. You can ensure that the phasers are indexed properly by attempting to rotate them. You will likely get one phaser to index, but not be able to index the other. If this is the case, lightly install the phaser bolt in the index phaser to hold it in place, then use the hex feature of the non-index camshaft to slightly rotate the cam in order to align the dowel. Once indexed, lightly install the phaser bolt. Check the timing marks to make sure they are still properly aligned and make sure the secondary chain is in the center of both the upper and lower contact pads of the tensioners. If everything looks good, torque the phaser bolts by once again holding the hex features of the camshafts to hold the shafts. The proper torque sequence goes as followed. Tighten the bolts to 30 foot-pounds, then loosen one full turn, then tighten to 18 foot-pounds, then tighten 180 degrees. Repeat this process on the other bank. Now go ahead and activate the secondary tensioners. Compress the tensioners fully and release. Ensure you notice the tensioners spring out and put pressure on the chains. Next, install the new crankshaft sprocket, then the primary chain. The primary chain will have two single marked links that will align to the two camshaft phaser marks and one double marked link that will straddle the mark on the crank sprocket. On roller chain engines, the single unique marked link aligns to the crank timing mark. To install the chain on the cam sprockets, the flat side of the intake phaser will need to be towards the exhaust phaser to allow the chain to fit between the two. Work the chain around both phasers, under the water pump sprocket, and around the crank with the timing marks close, then focus on properly aligning the timing marks. If needed, rotate the cams using the hex features to align the chain properly. With the chain aligned properly, install the lower left hand guide. Torque the bolts to 89 inch pounds. Once again, you can use the camshaft hex features to shift the slack of the primary chain as needed. Once the lower guide is installed, it is best to shift any slack on the guide side over to the tensioner side. Do this by slightly rotating the exhaust cam on the right bank counterclockwise. With all the primary chain slack on the tensioner side and the timing mark still properly aligned, install the primary tensioner arm, then the primary tensioner. Torque the tensioner bolts to 89 inch pounds. Recheck all your timing marks and pull the activation pin. Now go ahead and install the VVT solenoids and torque the bolts properly. On single phaser heads, reinstall the solenoid housing brackets. Your engine is now in time and you are ready to reinstall the valve covers, front engine cover, balancer, and the accessory drive components. 
Like always, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please contact our tech line and please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.